Hello guys, I am back in more familiar surroundings, my very own bedroom, um, no longer looking after Daisy the dog. I'm actually off on holiday tomorrow, but I'm going to record a number of these and hopefully put them out over the week. Thank you for watching so far. Uh, it's been great, it's been really fun. Today I want to talk about um, Olivia Giroud and Theo Walcott, two forward players who've both been linked with moves to Everton. We discussed this a little bit on the new Askcast Extra, which I urge you all to check out. Basically, we were wondering if you had to lose one of those two forwards, which would it be? You know, which would Arsene Wenger sell? For me, it would have to be Walcott. You know, we're talking about about a thirty million pound fee for either player, maybe slightly less for Giroud. But the thing about Walcott is he just hasn't got a place in the current system. So far, we've played two preseason friendlies. Both of those have been with three at the back. All the indications are that is the system Arsene wants to play throughout next season. Well, Walcott doesn't have a position in that. He is at his best as a right-sided winger in a front three. And there's no, you know, he can't play wing back. And he can't really play that kind of withdrawn inside forward role either because his ball retention skills aren't up to it. That's about, you know, being able to receive the ball, to play the ball through. It's not about being a pure runner. That's why Urzel and Alexis have excelled in those positions because it's about getting them on the ball, getting them involved in the approach play, in the build-up. That's not... Walcott's game. I think, you know, this is feels like an appropriate time to, to call time on Walcott's career with Arsenal. I, I thought the same last summer. And to be honest, he defied uh, many of his critics by coming back and scoring 19 goals. And yet, by the end of the season, he was out of the side, as it was in the previous campaign. Um, he did break back into it, I suppose, for the, uh, the cup final. Oh, no, that was the season before the cup final against Aston Villa. So yeah, the, the season before last, he, by the end of the campaign, he wasn't in Arsene Wenger's thoughts. There was that terrible match at Old Trafford. We lost 3-2. He played up front. And Wenger kind of gave up on the, the Walcott striker experiment. He revitalised himself a little bit on the right, but now that option's not there. And although Arsene Wenger says he wants to be able to switch between two systems, is that feasible to regularly do that throughout the season? Beyond Pep Guardiola, I can't think of another Premier League manager who's frequently switching between a back three and a back four. Certainly it's not in Arsene Wenger's normal repertoire to consistently change the shape of the defence. And as for Giroud, well, what's the argument to get rid of him? Maybe that he's a little bit older, maybe that this is the last chance to cash in on him. But he provides something very different to Walcott. What's Walcott? Quick forward. We've got other ones of those. We've got Walcott. Uh, well back. We've got Lacazette. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain can play in wide areas. You know, we don't have anybody like Giroud. Welbeck's the closest thing, but let's not pretend that his uh, ability back to goal or from crosses is anything like that of Giroud, and he's not as good a finisher. Welbeck's very useful, but there are things Giroud excels at that Welbeck cannot yet do. Um, so I think the case to keep hold of Giroud is clear. You know, you want a Swiss army knife in attack, don't you? You want different options and Giroud's a rather unique option. There aren't many as good at him as what uh, at what he does. But what does it come down to? You know, Arsene Wenger doesn't tend to sell players against their will. That's why it's taken us so long to get rid of the likes of Kieran Gibbs, pardon me, the likes of Carl Jenkinson, the likes of Mathieu Debussy. It's hard to get rid of these players, and if they don't push for it, I also think it's quite happy for them to stay. I mean, Jenkins is a great example. Turned down the move to Palace in January. I also think it's like, okay, st stay around. Stick around, mate. Keep picking up that salary. Um, and I don't think Walcott is inclined to push for a move. I don't think that's how he feels about it. I think he's very comfortable at Arsenal. Too comfortable, perhaps. But I think he's very comfortable. I don't think he's in a hurry to get away. I don't think Giroud's desperate to leave Arsenal. I think he, as he's been on record as saying, some he's really enjoyed his five years in North London. But he has a chance to be France's starting, starting striker at the World Cup next season. And that's a, not a chance that he'll let go of lightly. And I think he knows that behind Lacazette, it's going to be a problem for him. I don't think he's going to get the football he needs. And crucially, he'll lose out on that football to a direct rival. You know, if Lacazette scores 30 goals for Arsenal this season, touch wood, we'd all like to see that. That's a problem for Giroud who's not going to play as many games and potentially not going to score as many goals. 
obviously he's Deschamps' man, he's unlikely to cast him aside straight away, but I can see why Giroud might be concerned. So given that, and given that Arsene Wenger, he tends to let players go if they want to go, and he tends to let them stay if they're happy to stay. Given that, I think Walcott will stay and Giroud will go. It's not what I would do. I would do the inverse. I would do the inverse. I think you've got to keep one. You know, we can't afford to lose that many goals from the squad. We need to score more goals than last season, and those guys are both fairly reliable contributors. I fear that if one goes this summer, it'll be Giroud. Shouldn't be. For me, it should be Theo Walcott. Anyway, guys, do subscribe. Keep watching while I'm off on my holidays. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thumbs up. You don't see many of them anymore, do you?